Hi, I'm Tim McMacken, and I'm the documentation team lead for IBM Urban Code products. Today I'm going to talk about rollback in IBM Urban Code Deploy. We get a lot of questions about rollback, so it was time to show some of the rollback scenarios that you can use with Deploy, and when you might or might not want to use them. Rollback lets you back up an environment to a previous state. That means we go back to the component versions that were installed either before we ran a process or back when we created a snapshot. Rollback is not a replacement for regular deployments. For example, if you want to install an older version of a component, you don't have to roll back to it. In most cases, you can just redeploy it over the existing version. So some people think they need rollback when it's usually simpler to just redeploy the versions that they want. You do need rollback in two situations, and I'll cover these both with a demo in this video. Rolling back a failed deployment automatically. Suppose you run a deployment and it fails. You can use rollback as an error checking step. The rollback step catches the error and automatically sets the environment back to the versions that were there before the process started. That's useful for preventing downtime because it all happens automatically. The other time to use rollback is when you've got a snapshot that you know works. Deploy will get you back to that snapshot by uninstalling component versions that aren't in the snapshot. That's useful for getting an environment back to a happy state. It's a shortcut for you having to pick and choose which versions you want running in the environment and having to manually install and uninstall them. So let's look at the first scenario. Detecting that a component didn't deploy correctly and then automatically redeploying a previous version. If I've got an important application, I don't want it to go offline when a deployment fails. I'd rather go back to a previous version immediately so I have as little downtime as possible. That's where the replace with last deployed rollback is useful. You use this type of rollback within an application process to automatically redeploy the versions that were there when the process started. Here's an application process that you might recognize if you've worked with the JPET Store tutorial in Urban Code Deploy. It deploys the three parts of the JPET Store application a web archive file for the application logic, the database, and the static web content, which includes the pictures and other static files. Currently in this browser tab, I have version 1.0 of the application running. I'm getting ready to deploy version 1.1, but I want to add automatic rollback to version 1.0 in case the new version fails. For the purposes of the demo, I've rigged the database step to fail. So when this process runs, the application logic component gets updated. Then the static web component gets updated, but then the database component will fail. That's a problem because in this case, I want all three new versions to get deployed at the same time. So let's add some rollback steps to back up in case the database component fails to deploy. First, I'll add a step to roll back the application component. I add the rollback component step and select the application logic component. Then I select the deployment process for that component because I want to redeploy a different version of that component. Then for the rollback type, I select replace with last deployed. This way the server redeploys the version that was there before I ran the process. Same thing for the static web component. I roll back by redeploying the version that was there before. and the same thing for the database component. Now I just connect these new steps with failure links so they run if the database deployment step fails. I could do this for all the components, but for now I'm only doing this for the database component. Okay, now if the database component doesn't deploy, all of the components go back to the version that was deployed before the process started. Right now you can see that I have version 1.0 of each component deployed. 
I added a version number to the application UI so we can see that easily. Now let's deploy version 1.1 and see how the rollback works. There, the database component installation failed, and the rollback steps start running. Now everything has been rolled back. If I go to the running site, we can see that it's still at version 1.0, so the rollback worked. However, there's something you might not expect in the inventory for the environment. The inventory shows that the environment is non-compliant. That's because we intended to deploy version 1.1 of the components, and those versions didn't get deployed. Now, a lot of people think non-compliance means an error happened or the environment is broken, when it really means I tried to deploy a certain component version and it didn't get there. Right now, the application is running normally and the environment is okay. It just doesn't have the component versions that we tried to deploy. Let's stop talking about rollback just for a minute to dig into the inventory and compliance a little deeper. In this case, I try to deploy version 1.1 of the application logic and the static web component, but at the end of the process, the rollback steps deployed version 1.0. The inventory for each component shows version 1.1 because that's what I tried to deploy. The compliance shows 0 out of 1 because neither component has that specific version installed. I try to deploy version 1.1, but I got version 1.0. Because the database component uses incremental versions, its compliance is a little more complicated. At the start of the process, version 1.0 was already deployed. We tried to install version 1.1. Because 1.1 is an incremental version, the process added it to the inventory on top of the existing version. So the database component has two component versions in its inventory. The rollback steps deployed version 1.0 of the database component which is a full version. That full version wipes out any incremental versions that were there before. So the compliance is one out of two, because I tried to install two versions, but at the end of the process, only one is deployed. Inventory and compliance is an important topic in Urban Code Deploy, and it can be tricky when lots of components and versions get involved. So if you have questions, post them in the forum, and we'll talk it through. So that's the first rollback scenario detecting that a deployment is failing and automatically redeploying an older version. For the second rollback scenario, we're going to need a snapshot. Snapshots are great because they store component versions and properties that we know deploy properly. So when something goes wrong, I can roll back to a snapshot and get back to a happy state. It's a good idea to take snapshots after successful deployments. This type of rollback uninstalls everything that is not in a snapshot. So if you've got a bunch of incremental versions installed, it removes any versions that aren't in that snapshot. This type of rollback also works with full versions, but in the case of full versions, it's just as easy to install a full version over the existing versions rather than messing with the rollback. The other thing you need to use this rollback scenario is a component process that uninstalls the component. This is because we're using incremental versions. I can't just install the versions I want over the other incremental versions that are already there. I have to remove the versions that I don't want. So here I have a simple application with one component. It's got one full version and two incremental versions deployed. This deployment works well, so I'll take a snapshot.
The snapshot shows the three versions that are currently installed in the environment. Now suppose I install a bunch of other incremental versions. Now I've got a bunch of new versions installed, and the inventory for the environment shows all those additional component versions. Suppose now I want to go back to the good setup I took a snapshot of earlier. I've already got a component process that uninstalls these component versions, so now I need to create an application process to roll back to the snapshot. In this case, the rollback process only needs one rollback component step. I select my component here, and, this is important, I select the uninstall step for that component. That's how the server is going to remove the incremental versions that aren't in the snapshot. Under rollback type, I select remove undesired incremental versions, which does exactly what the name suggests. Now I can run that application process and give it my snapshot. The rollback step removes every component version that is not in that snapshot, and that gets the environment back to where it was before I installed all those other component versions. Now I'm back to my original three component versions in the environment. So those are the two main scenarios you can use rollback for in IBM Urban Code Deploy. If you've got questions, look us up on the forum and we'll try to help.